What's up guys, I'm Mitch from the DIYRecordingStudio.com and today we're going to be looking at part 2 of the Cappy VP28 mic preamp build. Welcome back to the channel guys, thanks again to all you new subscribers and if you're new to the channel please please hit like and subscribe down below. I'm really enjoying seeing this channel grow and it's awesome to see and I just want to say thanks to everyone so far that's either liked or subscribed or even commented down below. It's amazing to hear the feedback from you guys. It really makes creating all this content so worth it. If you haven't seen part one of this build I'll put a link right up here but that's enough from me, let's get into it. So first up you want to install the uh, C and K PHA push button switches and how we're going to do this is I like to put them on the board and then use a little bit of electrical tape to hold them in place and then when I flip the board I have a look and make sure that the legs are coming through the holes uh, sort of in the middle of those holes so that it's orientated correctly and then once that's orientated correctly, I will solder one of the corner pins, um, sometimes the opposite pins, and then check the orientation on the board by flipping it back over and just making sure that um, the switches are aligned properly. And then I'll solder the rest of the legs. And once you've done that, it's basically rinse and repeat. Uh, doing each switch one at a time just so you get a neat alignment um, If you try and do all the switches at the same time with some tape uh, You might find that some of them don't align properly So it's better to do them one at a time and just take your time with it and then that's the switches done and then next is the C and K mini toggle switch and this switch mounts from the bottom of the PCB and basically what it will be for is for toggling between the 6 dB octave and 12 dB octave on the high pass filters, um, which we'll see a bit later. And then before soldering, it's recommended to either hold the switch in position. I didn't actually hold it here because the um, switch actually locked into the PCB board nice and firmly. But if not, hold it in position and then trim all five of the pins short close to the PCB. This is really important because later on we're going to put um, another smaller circuit board that attaches to this main board and if you don't trim these pins it'll get in the way and it won't fit nice up and tight against the main PCB board and then you'll have some issues. So make sure you trim the legs on these really nice and short and close to the PCB and then solder them in place. And then next up is the grey hill switches that you need to install. And on the instructions it says that you need to install these stop pins. I didn't need to do that on this batch of grey hill switches. They were already done. All you need to do is attach them to the board. Now one of the recommendations is to first solder a pin in the middle. And then check the orientation and make sure that as always the switch is nice and even on the board and then go ahead and solder the rest of the legs. And I should also mention these legs are quite small, so you might want to be careful when stuffing this into the board because you might come up with some broken legs if you try and force it without aligning it properly in the first place. And once that's done for both the switches, you can move on to the next bit. And then next up, it's time to install this IC chip and uh, in the instructions it actually says to install the socket for this earlier in this revision of the board there wasn't an actual ic socket um, so you just had to install the chip straight to the board so it's kind of the same deal anyway you just with ic chips you want to just make sure that you bend the legs very carefully uh, you don't want to break them because then you'll be in a lot of trouble um, because they'll be flanged out a little bit and you need to straighten them to get them into the board nice and easily. Just take your time when you bend the legs, bend them up against the table or something firm and flat and then slowly straighten them a little bit and then try and get them in the board and then see how you go. Sometimes it takes a couple of goes to get it right. And then once it's in the board nice and safe, you can solder away. And as with all IC chips, before you handle them, you might want to make sure that you discharge any potential static. So if you're wearing rubber shoes, maybe take them off. <laughs> oh, and always with IC chips, they'll have a dot 
that sort of indicates uh, the orientation, make sure that you align that correctly with the PCB as well. And then next up is the input transformer, which is this EA2622. Um, and what you'll need to do with it is uh, add a small piece of double-sided tape to the board or the transformer, whatever is easiest for you. And that's to just hold the transformer a little bit off the board so that uh, none of the solder goes into the transformer and that the transformer itself, the uh, casing isn't touching the board. And then as always, it's good to solder one of the legs on the transformer and then check the orientation. And then if it's all good, then go ahead and solder the rest of the legs. And then next up are the output transformers. And you wanna put these uh, screws in first. And then once they're in, you need to put a washer on this back end and then you need to attach them to the board and the easiest way to do that is put this um, nut on and then hold it in place while you screw the um, screw into it and i found that was the easiest way to get these on the board otherwise it's quite fiddly and you also just want to make sure that the orientation of these transformers is correct that the wires are facing outwards to the points that they need to be soldered to. So the um, first transformer I've soldered there needs to face towards the gray hill switch. And then this second transformer needs to face downwards on the board. That way um, you can solder those wires in the way they're supposed to be. And then once they're in place, you need to trim each of these leads so that they're the right length to go into each of their positions on the board in front of them. Um, so you want to make sure that they're not too long and then they're going to go in quite neatly. Um, so just measure those out um, by sort of holding the lead where it needs to go and then trim it. And then you need to strip the ends of each of all of these leads so that they can be then inserted into the PCB and make sure you insert them in the right color order that's labeled on the PCB. It's pretty obvious um, what needs to go where um, as it's actually clearly abbreviated on the PCB there. And what's suggested is that you actually use a piece of heat shrink to hold and tidy the leads together. Um, this heat shrink wasn't added in my pack, in my kit, so I um, didn't use it if I had some heat shrink lying around, I would have, but um, it's not gonna be the end of the world. Um, it just would look a little bit neater if I did. And then once those leads are inserted into the right parts of the PCB board, you can then go ahead and solder them in place. And then once they're soldered nice and neatly in place, you can snip any excess lead coming out of the PCB there. And then once that's done, it's just rinse and repeat for the second output transformer. It's really easy, the same deal. Just go ahead and make sure that you've put the leads in the right place and then solder those ones as well. And then once that's done and you've snipped all the loose ends off those leads, you should be ending up with a nice looking PCB filled with the transformers. And then next up, you need to install this uh, long two pin header in the J2 position, it'll be used to connect the LED, one of the LEDs to the PCB later on. Um, so you need to make sure the plastic at the bottom of these um, pins on the header um, are tight to the top of the PCB. And then all you have left to do for the main PCB board is put in these push button caps on the switches we installed earlier. And it's important to get these colors right because they're going to signify the uh, correct things once we install the faceplate. So I'm doing this upside down on the camera, but it should be red on the bottom, then gray, then white, then gray again, or going from top to bottom, it would be gray, white, gray, and then red. Um, the top gray will be for phase, the white will be for the mic uh, button, the next gray will be for the pad switch and the red of course will be for the 48 volt phantom power switch so that should all make nice sense when you have the faceplate installed 
And that'll be it for this video. Next week, we're going to have a look at installing the high pass filter sub assembly smaller board that will attach to the main PCB board that we finished today. And I'll also do a video or two on the op amp builds because they're quite a unique little thing themselves as well. So there might be a couple of videos left in this series, probably at least two, because there's a lot to do in this build. I hope you enjoyed the video so far, and I'll catch you next time. So that's it for part two of the Cappy VP28 mic preamp build. I hope you enjoyed the video series so far. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe. If you've got any questions, hit me up in those comment sections down below. I'm Mitch from the DIYRecordingStudio.com, and I'll catch you soon.